It's that moment again, the one you dream of every night. La seule chose qui te préoccupe, c'est la gloire. Le cheminement de la réussite. Of pushing yourself further than ever before. But the true glory is in the shadows. Les sacrifices que tu fais. Quand toutes les chances sont contre toi. When you can't push one more second. Chase the glory. Viseo. Sports on CBC, presented by the Championnat du Sport at Radio Canada. Une présentation du gouvernement du Canada, the government of Canada. Nike, just do it. Petner. Fox 40, celebrating more than a decade of the Fox 40 U Sports Coach of the Year program. Pierre, partenaire des prix de l'entraîneur de l'année U Sport. Vera Burn, medical supply partner of Varsity Athletics since 1979. Partenaire du sport universitaire depuis 1969. Baron, exclusive supplier of U Sports Championship rings. Le fournisseur exclusif des bagues des championnats U Sports. Wilson, le ballon officiel de U Sports. Official U Sports basketball. Et par Green Shield Canada, Pierre partenaire en titre du 8 ultime Green Shield U Sports 2024. And by Green Shield Canada, proud pedal partner of the 2024 Green Shield U Sports Final Eight. Good afternoon and welcome here to day two of the 2024 Men's National Final Eight from Laval, Quebec as we get ready for what should be a, a moving day of games here as we have the Constellation round, the semifinal rounds, and we look forward to bringing it here with Greg Campbell, Mo Khan. All right, Greg, game two, day two, we have game twos for these teams here. Uh, it's the Constellation round right now. You can Winnipeg starting up here. It's pride now to win and be a top five team well you call a consolation round they want to be consoled both teams came in with high expectations coming into this weekend both lose very tight knit games at the end of the day they've got to settle for you know trying to get into that consolation final sunday but i mean you look at the two teams in terms of first the westmen i mean losing right at the buzzer sean moran an excellent game 19 points but is the foul trouble donald stewart he had to sit on the bench the last five or so minutes him and mikhail mikhailov in foul trouble, Stewart, three of 15 for the field for 11 points. And then you look at UCAM on the other side. I mean, Kevin Civil, excellent first half, double digit scoring, held to 14 at the end of the day. But you talk to Mario Joseph and his team about how sloppy they played in that second half. And a big reason why, 24 turnovers, 23 points. Well, one thing's for certain right now is that today, the winner will advance to tomorrow afternoon's fifth place game, the loser. Their season's a wrap, and that's it for them as you prepare for next fall. But again, it's a big game here for both teams because you want to send your seniors on a good note. Well, it's got check time for these two teams. I mean, it's not the energy you want to have coming into Saturday after riding that high getting into this tournament. But at the end of the day, the whistle blows and it's basketball. And, you know, pride is a big thing for a lot of these guys, especially those seniors. And you're going to see them dig deep in this game. Well, there's no medal that will be wrapped around these necks. It's all about pride. Who can finish top five at the 2024 U Sports Men's Nationals from St. Croix, Quebec. We'll see what happens today. Game number one on day number two, it is Winnipeg against UCAM. Stay tuned for that on CBC Sports.
Feel every hit point and celebration as if you're standing right on the sideline. Our passionate team unlocks a world of possibilities with digital broadcasting made simple, bringing heart-pounding action directly to millions of fans. Proudly Canadian, ISI Live, be there. Hey, you sports fans, check out shop.usports.ca for this week's promotional item from the Nike Team Collection. Visitez le shop.usports.ca pour en profiter de la promotion de la semaine de la collection Nike Team. They don't do it for the likes or for the shares. They do it for the fun of it, for the thrill, for the camaraderie, for the memories. CBC Sports, just because they love it. Hi, I'm here for my 3.30 with a Mr. Greer. Of course, we've confirmed coverage. The patient will be right with you. Now, oh, please welcome the starting lineups for both teams. Star Dr. Patel, the patient will see you now. Health coverage should put you first. Only Green Shield combines your health care and benefits coverage all in one place. Green Shield, better health for all. Welcome back to Laval. Here is the starting lineup for Winnipeg and UCAM, courtesy of Mark Antoine Garapi. Hey, le numéro 14 and number 14, Mike, Mike Kailov. L'entraîneur chef de Westman, the head coach, Mike Rainbow. Et maintenant, voici l'alignement partant du côté des citadins. And now for the UCAM, le numéro 8, number 8, Shake Dosso. Le numéro 13, number 13, Kevin Civil. Le numéro 15, number 15, Bad Ida. Le numéro 22, number 22, Eddie Carajo. Et le numéro 24, and number 24, McFadden Jean. L'entraîneur-chef, Mario Joseph. Welcome back here to St. Foy, Quebec, the 2024 Men's U Sports National League presented by Michelob Blight and Green Shield. It is Greg Campbell. It is Mo Khan. Uh, the big storyline for Winnipeg today, Greg, is that Don Stewart, not in a lineup, um, did suffer an upper body injury in the game yesterday and the loss that they had in the thriller to Queens. Uh, does that change the uh, diagram for the Westman, how they approach this game? Well, I mean, they run from the inside out, and that's their big play is feeding off Mikhailov and that of Donald Stewart. So you're going to see a switch now and with the insertion of Elijah Mensa into the starting lineup. They'll run a lot of that horns action off those two in the high low. You can their sky blues with numeral trim and Winnipeg in their away blocks with white and red numeral trim to get things underway. A uh, Can West versus RSEQ battle. And here's McFan and Jean, and they are wanting to get off on a better start. And the first possession, no good for Czech Dosu, who's starting this game for the first time as La Forêt gets a bit of a respite on the first possession. Yeah, it started with a 3-2 zone versus you see a man-to-man -man matchup by UCAM right off the bat. Mikhailov clearing out traffic for Alexander. Mikhailov had a solid game yesterday. Here's Alexander, who had a wonderful second half for the Westmen. And Winnipeg came on strong against Queens, but just ran out of the racetrack at the end of the day. And here's Mikhailov's hook shot, and he gets the first two. They're one for one, and they're out of the gates, up by two. Well, Mikhailov, the only player in a double-double with 13 points and 10 rebounds, but, I mean, they got outscored 27-15 in that second quarter, a big reason why they had to play catch-up. Backdoor, McFanagean, an absolute sitter. He misses. Dosu on the cleanup, and he gets his first two points. He's scoring about four and a half a game. And check Dosu six times, led the team in blocks, had three against McGill during the regular season. Yeah, in terms of second chance points, they only had a pair yesterday in their loss to the number six GG's, a seven point loss. And Moranin, who was the player of the game yesterday, he opens up his account to make it 4 2 for the Westman. Well, I mean, the kid was asked to do a lot 19 points, six of 16 from the field, four rebounds, two steals, and it's going to be on him to carry the load again he this is, afternoon. He is so edgy with class, and here's Seville with class. He misses the three from the flat, rebounded by Dosu, new 14 for the Citadin, and now Seville cutting through the lane. Jean, he's explosive. Carrojo back out to Seville. On the spin, Seville up, rejected out of bounds by Mensa. And for Elijah Mensa, unfortunately for him, he was the one that released the ball that got denied. 
at the end of the game against Queen. Yeah, but the sophomore has got a bright future here. Averages a hair under five points per game. But you see on the volleyball tipping as the shot clock expires. I mean, his length and his athleticism is going to pay dividends for Mike Rimbo and his team the next couple of years. And here is someone who's paid dividends. And a big splash coming through for Miranda, who's shooting 31% from three this season. And you see why this is a man with an assassin-like mentality. Well, I mean, he canned four of them yesterday, four of the six for the team. So, I mean, he accounts for 67% of the three-point shots made, even though they clipped only 22% in their loss yesterday. Absolutely magical. Jean from the flats. Overcooked that shot. Rebound right over to Gordo. And the Galactico, Alberto Gordo, will give it back to Moranin. Mensa from the far side. Off the heel, rebound Makalov, and he finds Seville instead, and here comes Ucam. The sky blue has numbers in favor. A Hadara and a whistle and a foul with 7.29 left. 7-2 lead for the Westman over the Citadin. And slow to get up is Gordo. Not a hot shooting start for the Citadin. One of seven so far, 14% versus three of four, but we'll go to the line to try and uh, right the wrong here and you know, stop this early run by Winnipeg, who's come hot out of the gates in the first. Yeah, UCAM uh, this year, uh, uh, this year, sorry, Greg, this year UCAM was 5 0 when they hit 50% or better in a game. They were 40% or less eight times during the regular season. So you can see, as you made the point, that they can fly out of the gates on a sky high or they can be descending towards ground zero in terms of how they don't shoot the ball well. Well, it was different compared to yesterday as Hedera goes to the line and he's going to knock down the second. He had a game high 24 yesterday to go along with four steals. He was 7 of 13. The big reason why UCAM was still in the game against the GGs when Kevin Civil got pretty much shut down in the second half. Here's Alexander with it. Carrojo on him and the hot hand. Moranin give and go well repelled by but Hedera. Carrojo on the go. Alexander will cut off the lane, and now they get their sets going. They go 2-3 zone matchup here. Garajo in the paint. Kick out from the 45. Corner pocket. Missed by Seville, who had a tough second half against Ottawa. Was in fuego in the first half against the Gigi. Well, you're going to see a couple times with the ball movement on the zone going to the pocket corner as Alexander will head to the line for two off the foul of Carajo there. Yeah, going to the line is Alexander, who had a good game yesterday. Malachi Alexander, the Winnipeg Dynamite. And uh, a 7-4 lead for the Westman, who shoot about, again, 70% from the free throw line. Uh, they've had the highs of highs and the lowest of lows. They were 57% against Mount Royal, 80% against their crosstown rivals, Manitoba Bison. Well, and yesterday they're 67%, so you wonder those nine misses in a the game they lose right at the buzzer by one point, how much that sits on their minds. Always knee at the line is Alexander, who this season shot 50%. And a good start for the Westman, and now in the game is Samuel uh, Cayo, along with Quincy Lurijun. Well, it's going to come down to guys like Malachi Alexander or Alberto Gordo to get going. I mean, the two of them combined for 22 points yesterday off nine of 24 shooting, but... Especially with Stewart out of the game, and he's a banger on the inside. They're going to need that tertiary scoring option. Louis Jean, a three from Carajo. Splash! He gained his first three, and you see the precise finish by him from the long-range distance. And they finally knocked their first one from the Lambion. They came second into this contest, shooting 32% from the Lambion, averaging nine and a half makes. Malakoff missing that one as he overcooked that one. Cayo on the run. Here's Louis Jean. He's got four options to work with. Going out to the far side. That is deflected out of bounds. Intended for Hadara. Repelled away by Moran and, and Makalov. As now they will bring in uh, a sub in number 10 and Ryan Luke. And again, you talk about not having Donald Stewart in the lineup. You're missing out on 12 points. You're missing out on the player who shoots 32% from the three-point range and five and a half rebounds for the Westman. But you're getting young guys like Luke and Mensa, both sophomores, heavy minutes here. And Luke had to do that yesterday when Stewart got in foul trouble, especially in that fourth quarter. Him and Mikhailov were playing with house fire at four apiece. And Carrojo, last touch by him. And in the game now is number two, Manuel Thomas from Winnipeg, Manitoba. And he's scoring about four and a half points per game for the Westman. Came off the bench, scored one point in the loss of Uvic in the Can West final. Good job by the red shirt junior, just cutting off the baseline there. Now the lower block, Luke. Alexander, that rims out. Rebounded by Carrojo and uh, you see that are back on the front foot. Good look there, though. I mean, the defense collapsed, and you see the running gun approached by the Citadin as he goes off glass for two. And Hadar got hit in the head, but you see the battle wits. He wins that one. And it is going back over to Moranin, who's been the hot hand, the assassin. 
And he gets the clank in, and a three for him. They're back up by three. And he stays perfect from the field. The game high eight now. Hadera with four on the other side. That ends a 5-0 run for the Citadel. It is now 12-9 lead with 5.30 left in this first quarter play. Doso going up against Luke on the spin. And that is off the heel, rebounded by Alexander. And the Westman off to a much better start in this game compared to yesterday against Queens. Well, I'm really content to play that zone defense and see if they can beat him on the shooting ability. Moranin trying to work his ability out there. Here's Alexander. He's been the one-two punch with Moranin so far in this first quarter play. Eight left on the shot clock. Using his deltoids against Hydara. Repelled away by Hydara. Doso in the cleanup. And here is the Hadi Hydara. Could be playing his last ever game with UCAM. And uh, Olivier uh, Quincy Louis Jeune call for the walk. Caught in two minds. Yeah, you just want to size him up on the inside there. As you'll see a trio of substitutions and then... Won by Mario Joseph and company as Steve Bajo Diaz checks into the game. The freshman averages a hair under five points per game and early timeout here. Timeout called on the court. 4.58 left in this first quarter play. 12 9 lead for Winnipeg over UCAM. You're watching the 2024 U Sports Men's National 8 presented by Michelo Blight on CBC Sports. I'm here for my 3.30 with a Mr. Greer. Of course, we've confirmed coverage. The patient will be right with you. <laughs> Dr. Patel, the patient will see you now. Health coverage should put you first. Only Green Shield combines your health care and benefits coverage all in one place. Green Shield, better health for all. The 2024 GFL U Sports Women's Hockey Championship presented by Connect Energy is headed to the campus of the University of Saskatchewan for the first time March 14th to 17th. Single game tickets start at $10 for children, $22 for adults. Click on the QR code on your screen at the bottom of your screen or visit usas.universitytickets.com to order your tickets today. The 2024 Green for Life U Sports Women's Hockey Championship in Saskatoon. Chase the glory and... Um, I learned something about you, Mr. Campbell. You are from that neck of the woods right now. Right? Well, yeah, I mean, I traveled out to the Great West there, and I mean, Muscle Burser Place is going to be bumping that weekend. They posted a couple big games, including the uh, Canada International Series as the three missed there by Gorovo. Perfect hockey venue, great place to go. And honestly, if you haven't gone before, whether you're in Saskatchewan or nearby provinces or just love hockey in general, highly recommend checking out the venue. Now, the question is, if they mention your name, was there a discount given, a promo code? Uh, I, I can't say yet whether that will be true or not, partner. Louis Jun with the promo code of two-pointer right there in the Dine Embers of the shot clock. And now it's a 12-11 lead for the Westman over the Citadel. You know, I don't want to make false promises. It's not, you know, Saskatoon's a big city, but it's a small province. You know, word gets around quickly. Hey, you know what? You mentioned your name. You're popping bottles around there, you know? So there you go. And here he is, the Citadel looking to try and pop some points against the Westman in this first quarter play. We're south of four. Hadara. Diaz. Louis Jun. And unfortunately, caught in two minds again. That's the second turnover by Quincy Louis Jr. in this first quarter of play. Not the most uh, serene first action for him today. Well, it was something that Mario Joseph, I'm sure, addressed with the team as they go to the 1 2 2 full court press here. And Moran's going to be able to dissect this pretty easily, a veteran for this team. But I mean, the 24 turnovers for 23 points just absolutely killed them. And you're going to see the bump foul there as he tried to cut off the sideline. Diaz there. But Sean Moran, and I mean, this kid, 19 points yesterday, and he led the team this year with 42 steals, but his 354 assists over the course of his career coming into this tournament are the fourth most in school history. So you're going to see this kid can shoot, and they'll go back to that double horns look, a staple when you have Stewart and Mikhailov in the lineup. Luke, and here is Gordo. Good see him back out ready to go. On the spin, the fade right. Frank Iron rebounded by Diaz. Steve Diaz, as you mentioned before, first year player, one of the top three point shooters in Quebec, under 50%. At one point, he was 53% from long range, and he was blitzing threes 
during the month of Jan into February. Well, I mean, he's first in that category in terms of percentage on the year. So, I mean, for a freshman to come in and clip it at that rate is outstanding. But we're having trouble with this 2-3 zone here. Kyle, two left in the shot clock, and he will sneak in. It was not mapped out properly, but he ends up at the destination of two, and now they are up by one, 13-12. And that's a lot of hard work. Nice slip pass inside and a turnover. And now a slip move right there. Kayo back on the front foot, trying to get themselves an extension. They're up by one. Louis Jeune against Luke. Nowhere but a black wall. Here's a three from the 45. Off the iron, rebounded by Luke. And here goes Moranin back up ahead. And with it now is Gyro for the first time. And the three from Gordo. And he misses that one. The putback right there off the miss from Can Cam. And this will be a one point lead for Winnipeg. And that's thanks to Mikhailov just crashing the boards in that situation. Had 10 rebounds yesterday, five on the offensive glass. Big reason why they were able to be competitive. Dosu, clean up on that. He is a poacher of rebounds. You see why as he gets a stud the shot from Louis Jeune in for two. Good flow, good pace, good action right now with these teams. 15 14 lead as we approach two left. Mikhailov in the jungle and he gets the two point right there we are going back and forth and the scorekeeper table is getting a real action right now of the lead changes so far for both a teams. nice little flush with the left hand there for the junior who averages 14.3 points per game six in terms of field goal percentage at just under 53 percent on the year hadara diaz around one Kayo from the flats rims out rebound mikhailov I like the ball movement, though. They had the opportunity, and then Diaz, again, beats traffic and goes across the pond there. They just can't convert. Mikhailov, and here is Kankam, who's scoring about three a game for the Westman, the native of Winnipeg. Looks like a travel there. They got away with one on the slide. And they will travel in 10 now. Here's Coyote, second steal in the last two minutes of play. As you see, Dadan will wait for the reinforcements, and they are bringing out uh, a melange of vets and youth out there on the court, with Diaz being the youngest on the court right now. Diaz, Moranin keeping foot footworks at premium, and now back over comes a five off the shot clock. Hydara, off balance, no good. Rebound, last touch by Winnipeg. So you can get a new 14, and a timeout called on the court. It is Winnipeg 16, you can 15. We are from St. Paul, Quebec. You're watching the 2024. U Sports Men's National Championship presented by Green Shield and Michelob Light on CBC Sports. I think part of there's just some substitutions actually going on right now. So just a trio of substitutions going on between the two sides there. And right now they get the clock fixed. They had the one minute timeout here. So we apologize. We're still back. They had the one minute clock up for the timeout. So we'll get the uh, clock corrected, which the referees have not yet seen. And here's a range from KO, and he misses that one, rebounded by. The Westman, and now here they come back the other way. Moran and back and forth here. So you see that extension on the push off. They're going to double him all game. Mario Joseph making it intentional that this kid can't have the ball in his hands in the half court. Moran in off the window and in. They're now back up to a 18 15 lead. And that's why, I mean, he's got 10 points compared to the seat to then 15, and he's still perfect from the field 4 4, including a pair of bombs from the land beyond. Diaz. Here's Jean back in the game. He started as the five for the Citadin. Big hedge over on that screen there. Gao. Carajo on the byline. Find the cutter. Diaz from the corner pocket. Too much on that shot. Rebounded by the Westman. Here they come. 15 ticks left. Alexander to the left. Denied by Ko, And now back with it is Carajo. The alley. Jean. Extra pass from the 45. Champagne basketball by Steven Diaz at the end of one. We're back to parity. 18-18. It is Winnipeg. It is UCAM. They're playing with a little bit more verb than before. Stay tuned. You're watching the 2024 U Sports Men's National Championship presented by Green Shield and Michelob Light on CBC Sports. I'm here for my 3.30 with a Mr. Greer. Of course, we've confirmed coverage. The patient will be right with you.
Dr. Patel, the patient will see you now. Health coverage should put you first. Only Green Shield combines your health care and benefits coverage all in one place. Green Shield, better health for all. Welcome back here to St. Foix, Quebec. Don't forget, get your tickets. The 2024 U Sports Women's Volleyball Championship is headed to the campus of McMaster University in Hamilton, Ontario on March 15th to the 17th. Tournament packages and single game tickets are on sale now. Click on the QR code at the bottom of your screen or visit marauders.ca slash tickets to order your tickets today. The 2024 U Sports Women's Volleyball Tournament in Hamilton, Ontario. Chase the glory. Isaiah Alexander with his first basket there. Big story in that first quarter. Kevin Civil, the league MVP, still scoreless 0-3 from the field. The struggles continue from the second half, but we're not at 18 coming into the second quarter after Diaz. that first made basket. For three, he's back to back on that, and they're now up by one. Their third three-pointer now, three of nine from the Lambion compared to 40%, two of five for the Westman. Yeah, eight times they had 10 or more threes to see that end during the regular season. McAuliffe is hooked by Carajo. First team foul for the Citadin in this quarter. And right now, Greg, when you look at it in this first quarter, uh, tail of the tape, who had the edge in the key numbers in terms of what you've seen from the court? I mean, the bench points at the end of the day speak volumes about Mario Joseph and his confidence to roll guys in and out of the lineup consistently. As you see done late with the substitution there, but you see Belgeau with six points, Dosso with four. So the bench coming up big in a game where pride is on the line. They go back to that horns look here. Sean Moran, big reason why the Westmen. And he's the reason why they're up again by one on a triple for him. He's been absolutely sumptuous in his three-point shooting. And you see that Winnipeg is going punch for punch with the seat that end. I mean, he's taken, I talked about it being on his shoulders. He had 19 yesterday, already 13, and we're a minute into the second quarter. Carajo, Cayo. Around the protractor, Diaz on a hat-trick of three, swings it back, swings it back out, KO's three. And that's off the mesh, rebounded by Mikhailov, as he's being hounded by Hilaire, who's in the game, who did start the game yesterday for a brief cameo because there was a bit of a uniform situation with Hydara in game number one. Excellent ball movement, though, as they go to work in the block, the Westman. And that is stripped midair, taking away Isaiah Alexander, Carajo, Ali, McFadden, Jean on the arts and science meeting at the hoop for McFadden Jean. That's one of the few times they've been able to get out running and free as Moranian will draw the foul, but you, you have to like, you know, despite the misses from the land beyond and they're shooting 38% from the field right now, the Cita Den, as you'll see the transition here, the nice little alley, and then uh, if nothing oops about that as it's clean flush for two there by the Cita Den in the number three seed, but their ball movement has been excellent over the course of this game so far against that zone defense. They're starting to settle in. Those touch extra passes, and when they're missing, they've been clean looks. But Moranin goes back to the line, and now it's his first trip this afternoon, but he remains perfect from the field in all categories. Five of five in terms of total shots, three of three from the land beyond. So McFadden Jean won the, uh, he's a pogo stick in Quebec. He's a human highlight reel for dunks. He won the dunk competition at an all-star tournament back in 2021. And you can find it on, on YouTube, but uh, it's, a, it's a crazy dunk he did. And he had literally the crowd rushing him after the dunk. Con He's also a defensive won. player of the year this year. I mean, his game reminds me a lot of an Aaron Gordon where he was known if you're talking about the athleticism, but then he's elite defensively as well. Hilaire stock, and now Diaz for the hat trick. And that rims out. Rebound, Doso stopped on the blackboard and in for the two. And now they're up to a 25-25 game. 
Good secondary effort there and for the put back and good no calls by the officials. Mikhailov kind of riding the line there of what's considered a foul as Moran accepts the screen on the left side. Moranin now again against the jaw. Moranin, nothing yet. Luke inside the paint and he is stopped and he will go to the left for two free throws. Kevin Seville has not had the uh, success that he was looking for here in St. Foy this weekend. Has been a bit uh, turbulent at times and now Luke at the line shooting 61% scoring four game for the Westman and this is a man who has been a key depth player had eight points in a game this season twice when you look at civil I mean the league MVP as we mentioned he's top five in terms of three-point makes seventh in terms of assists third in terms of free throw percentage so he's kind of the catalyst for this team but guys like Hilaire have stepped up in certain cases or sorry not Hilaire Hadera and it's a big reason why they were able to be, again, they had a close matchup yesterday, and they're going to rely on that secondary and tertiary options today. Seville, and that is a foul on Luke. McAuliffe was there in support. And this game's a lot more intriguing now on the 26-25 lead for the Westman over the Citadin. And uh, again, they're not going to play for a medal here, Greg. They're, they're playing for pride and to be a top five team. That is the goal now for one of these teams. And UCAM did that last year when they lost to Carleton and they won out to finish in fifth place in Canada. Well, it's a sour taste as pocket three missed there, but both teams going to go home without a medal and either a color they have not been able to do in their program's histories. Alexander swung around, Moran in center arc three. Back heel miss by Thomas and uh, back over to Diaz who can play the point guard role for the Citadin. And of course, this is Kevin Seville's last game or two, depending if they win today or not. So they have to start looking at the future and who can be the point guard. And Doso cannot finish on the hook shot. It remains a one point lead for Winnipeg. And Moran and out and running and got in the other way. He is a grease lightning accelerator for this Westman offense. Alexander and playing five out with the screen from Mikhailov now the size mismatch inside against Diaz from Winnipeg Splash thought he was fouled by Jean and they go up by four Well, he wants to know and he checked with the official there gives her a thumbs up He thought the landing spot is try to beat him back door there Doso He just gave Mikhailov a postcard back to Manitoba Nothing else to be said my partner that was scary looking and now Seville, the Citadel have woken up from the slumber, and that got the bench going. Jaw missing the triple, rebound Mikhailov, and here is Moranin the other way. Moranin with a teardrop, and he can't get the. And he's get hobbling that on that foot to his awkward landing, and he's oh down boy. in pain right now on the baseline. Hopefully, it's not bad. Dosu. And this will be a whistle, and this will be a foul. You see him trying to walk it off right now. It's concerning right now for Sean Moran. And yeah, this is not good news for the Westman. Sean Moran has been here, and here's the replay of the dunk. I mean, it just collapsed on the inside, and Mikhailov, you know, goes up to contest for a second, then he realizes he just does not have the positioning battle on the inside. And a cram for two. It was at the midway point in the year where Mikhailov realized, oh, bleep. And that's what he said in his mind. Well, I mean, it's going to be a photographic uh, Kodak moment, to say the least, if it was captured correctly. I hope the folks at U Sports have that on their Twitter page. Because, you know, dunks are, they're not as vibrant in terms of the ability to dunk on someone in basketball. But when you get a chance to do that, that is a, a forever moment. Right. And it's not something McCullough wants in his life to be recognized as being dunked on by Dosu who's 0 for from the free throw line, shooting 61% from the line this season. I'm sure that's not his favorite memory of the tournament so far. Uh, no, when, a win would go a long way with erasing what just happened. We'll recommend some poutine spots for him. Our, our backroom staff has given us some good spots to go to. And here is Jaro in the game. We're in the number zero. And Seville, the Rolls Royce taken away from the baby Bentley. Seville missing the back heel, rebounded by... Mensa. Oh, Jaro replacing that of Moran, and he's an all rookie himself, so not a bad downgrade if we'll call it one for Mike Rambeau and company. Mike Rambeau was a part of the uh, Winnipeg Sea Bears staff and CEBL as well, and um, Coach Taylor. And Winnipeg looking like they're going to be a good team this year. And here's a three for Gordo, and that is a miss rebounded by Doso. Also a CCA alum where he coached the UNBC Timberwolves, and they were champs in his last season at the helm there. 
And here is Alexander at the helm, around one. Backing up against Doso. Third pass, Mensa off the window using the geometry, and they're now back up by three. The fact that he, Doso was almost able to come back and recover there defensively is great footwork by him, but just better finish at the rim. Seville, is Lujan. Right down St. Catherine Street, and we're back to a 31-31 game. Again, just triple penetration inside, defense collapse, and then the correct feed to the outside, and guys know where to go in that situation, and they make them pay. As we approach four left in this first half of play, Luke, the easiest two points in his Westman career. He's up to five now. Moran and leads all scores at 18 as he's getting nursed on the benches. Injuries, Mikhailov by the scorer's table. Seville thought about the three. He goes to option B. Backdoor, Louis Jean. Seville on the interplay. Nylon from the center arc. A brilliant shot by him. UCAN now up by one. Yeah, he was over four coming in, and he finally gets one to go, and that must be a sigh of relief for a man who's had about three and a half quarters of struggle after a brilliant first half in the quarterfinal. Jaro is fouled by Dosu with 3.32 left in his first half of play. And uh, looking on the court now, there is no Moran in out there so we hope that it's nothing serious for him as well timeout call in the court stay tuned it is a 34 33 lead for ucam over winnipeg you're watching the 2024 u sports men's national final eight presented by michael blight on cbc sports feel every hit goal and celebration as if you're standing right on the sideline immersing you in the game like never before bringing heart-pounding action directly to millions of fans we deliver unparalleled simplicity and tailor-made digital broadcasting solutions crafted to make you feel every moment in a way like never before. Our passionate team ensures your message reaches audiences reliably every time. Proudly Canadian, we bring a touch of innovation and our passion to the world stage. ISI Live, be there. Hi, I'm here for my 3.30 with a Mr. Greer. Of course, we've confirmed coverage. The patient will be right with you. Dr. Patel, the patient will see you now. Health coverage should put you first. Only Green Shield combines your health care and benefits coverage all in one place. Green Shield, better health for all. The 2024 University Cup Men's Hockey Championship returns to Toronto for the first time in a quarter century, March 14th to 17th, at the Matinee Home Ice, located within the walls of the historic Maple Leaf Garden. Single game tickets start at $23. Click on the QR code at the bottom of your screen or visit Ticketmaster.ca to order your tickets. The 2024 University Cup hosted by Toronto Metropolitan University. Chase the glory. Uh, Maple Leaf Gardens. Uh, if you talk to any Maple Leaf fan, they weren't happy about the trade deadline yesterday. But, uh, of course, you can be happy to go watch this event next weekend at the Matinee Center out there. That was a long time uh, soldier of the fan of the Leafs. I mean, heartbreak is uh, just around the corner. Uh, it's, uh, it's almost a rite of passage if you're a Leafs fan at times. Our, our executive di director, producer John Bauer, is a diehard Leafs fan. He might take us off the, the uh, broadcast if we talk bad about the Leafs. I mean, I'm, I'm as realistic as it comes to the Leafs, but you, you have to like what they're doing so far this season outside of a pair of losses to Boston and, as of late. And here's a shot missed this time by Briar. Rebound and a likable play by Carrojo. As he gets the hoop in the harm, and good news to the Westman, back in the game is Moranin. And uh, Garjo goes to the line for two free throws. He played, as you see from the replay right here, he just went up strong and over Ryan Luke. And for Garjo, he was a part of the Montreal Lions the last couple of seasons in the CEBL. Uh, and he is definitely a, a foundation piece for the Citadel moving forward. Well, something's messed up there as he wants to make sure his free throw stance is right here, rocking those uh, aqua blue shoes there. But second chance opportunities, the story of this game right now for the Citadel and six offensive boards so far. I have to correct you, actually, that's a Barcelona C blue, actually. It's the Barcelona C blue. Oh, okay. I didn't know they yeah. sold that version on the uh, basketball shoe website. It's a very popular version. And here is a popular player in Gordo. And he misses the three, rebound right to Mikhailov, and he gets the two, and now it is a one point lead for the Citadel as we are approaching inside three, inside three minutes of this ball game in the first half. And that's pretty, because he keeps his hands high there, looks around, and then everyone draws attention. He's able to float it in for two. Louis Jun. 
Gotta go. Nylon. And now they're up by four, and big scene now for you, Gav. Well, you want to give them space, they're going to make you pay. They're second in the rest in terms of three-point shots as the shot missed there. 32% for the land beyond, but they're clipping well above that right now. And here is Louis Jean. Transition pass. Hadara, Seville from the flats. Back heel, rebound right over to Alexander. He's got numbers. Mensa breakaway and a two-handed autograph. And they're down by two. Excellent job by Mensa out in transition there. Better find by Alexander. Threads the needle for a two and a jam. Carrojo, Briere, Hydara caught in two minds, and his size 14s go out of bounds. And with 205 left in this first half of action, uh, as you see from the highlight reel right now from the Citadin. Uh, just a, it's the extra touch pass, and Gordo knew he was late to close there, and he lived with the result there, daring him to shoot. They made a pay. They've got six three-pointers now, 32% when you average it out compared to four of ten. They'll be at gold medal games Sunday night, 6 p.m. on CBC Sports and also on TV Asbok for those who want, who want to watch it in French. Uh, we'll have that here. You and I will be here for that. We don't know who's there yet. We'll find out in about uh, nine hours from now. Louis Jean with the block, and he's trying to find out the two points coming up in the layup, and he's got it, and they're up by four. Good displacement of Alexander underneath the rim there with the right hand. A subtle extension is... Trying to figure out their matchups here, and they're caught chasing. Mensa cannot get the conversion. Rebounded by Louis Jean, 128 left here. And right now, it's been a worldly effort for the Citadel. They've been high flying. And another turnover by Carajo, and they go back the other way. Second consecutive time, back-to-back -back plays there where they've turned it over on the side there in the wings. It looks like timeout called on the floor by Winnipeg. Timeout called on the floor. 42-38 lead for UCAM over Winnipeg. You're watching the 2024 U Sports Men's National Final Eight from St. Paul, Quebec. Presented by Michelob Light and Green Shield on CBC Sports. Welcome back here to St. Foix, Quebec, uh, the Laval University campus, home of the Rouge d'Or. We'll have Laval in the final game of game number two. And that's a big one because the winner will punch their passports to the gold medal game tomorrow night at 6 p.m., which we'll have here on CBC Sports. What an exciting time, partner, because, I mean, all four teams that are in the semifinals have never won a national championship. So it's a breath of fresh air for you, sports. And it's going to be a competitive two games with an all OUA matchup in the other one. Yeah, we have, we have a couple of second place finishers. Dalhousie, second place about four years ago. Uh, Ottawa's been uh, the Susan Lucci uh, award winner a few times as a second place winner. And uh, right now, with 111 left, uh, it is UCAM up by four. And uh, so far, we've seen that blistering ferocity. We've seen the daisy cutter effort from both teams. Um, no signs of uh, not being uh, involved. They are both involved, the teams, in, in this game here. And I think for UCAM, they've gone more to their bench using the youth more than the veterans at this point of the game. Well, they want to roll the dice here, especially with getting rotational minutes here. But they're used to being in tight contests. Yesterday, no quarter was won by more than four points in their seven-point loss to the Ottawa GGs. And then you see the Westman stay in the course here in the second quarter as it's a four-point lead, 24-20, being outscored in the second quarter for the seat to them over the Westman. But... They were outscored 27-15 yesterday as the effort by Mikhailov all for naught. Yep, and it remains with 109 left. Uh, UCAM could get a two-for-one possession here. Uh, plenty of time for late drama in this first half. We've seen some highlight reels. Uh, again, I hope U Sports gets those dunks because those were some very aggressive and violent dunks at the hoop. Good calls, too, and 17 points off the bench and are around the world here. And a nylon shot coming for Hydara. They're up the biggest lead of six so far for either side. That's the look they've been getting all afternoon. Doesn't matter which pocket or corner you want to pick. They've been dissecting that zone defense to the tune of seven three-pointers now. Surgical and magical today so far. And here's McAuliffe, who's been surgical for the Westman all season long. Gordo, the Galactico. 
Alexander the three. Right down Portash Reed. Is that Portash Reed? Did I get that right? Yes, you did. Great. Yeah. Good shot. Initially, better pass for a great shot. And that's what you have to do in a game like this. It's a one possession difference. My buddy Andrew Patterson, who's the host of Winnipeg Sports Talk, would kill me if I got that wrong. And here is Louis Jeune. That's the play for the last roll of the dice in this first half of action here from St. Foix, Quebec. Louis Jeune. Seville. Right down St. Catherine Street. And UCAM up by six. Moranin, one chance here, four seconds left. Moranin around two. Back over to Gordo. And that is a miss. So at the end of the first half, UCAM up 48-42. You're watching the 2024 U Sports Men's National Final Eight from St. Paul, Quebec, brought to you by Green Shield and Michelob Light on CBC Sports. Hi, I'm here for my 3.30 with a Mr. Greer. Of course, we've confirmed coverage. The patient will be right with you. Dr. Patel, the patient will see you now. Health coverage should put you first. Only Green Shield combines your health care and benefits coverage all in one place. Green Shield, better health for all. They don't do it for the likes or for the shares. They do it for the fun of it, for the thrill, for the camaraderie, for the memories. CBC Sports, just because they love it. Welcome back here to the 2024 U Sports Men's National Championship presented by Green Shield and Michael Blight and the highlights from the first half, and you see the fans on flying in there like aerial prowess. Over there. Well, I mean, there was a couple of times they wanted to get out and running and gutting Mario Joseph and company. He sloppy second half in the quarter final loss yesterday, but brilliant first half. They've been di dissecting that zone defense, and when they've not been scoring, they begin second chance opportunities like that where they kiss it off the glass for two. Sean Moran, and a big reason why. Westman still in this game game high 18 points. He had 19 total Yesterday and he's six of seven from the field. You got Dolso and Jun with nine apiece and for right the on number time. three seed the aerial gravity that he brought on that play the artistic impression right there and and it's, a, it's a bench points as well partner for the seats of that has been a big story as you see the nice collapse on the inside and then the flush for two at the end there but 17 bench points for UCAM has been huge in this game as Kevin Civil, who has been two of seven from the field for six points. I mean, they've got two, four, six guys now with six or more points. So the scoring has been distributed. The ball movement has been artistic, to say the least. And the finishes, more often than not, have been flush and painted a beautiful first half for UCAM here. Well, we'll see now how this play is moving forward here as we have the second half to look forward to. And as for awards, that is a key number here. Every year, U Sports celebrates its best student athletes honoring the major accomplishments in each sport. 
Here are the nominees and winner of the 2024 U Sports Rookie of the Year Award and the 2024 Fox 40 U Sports Coach of the Year Awards. The nominees for the Dr. Peter Mullins Trophy as U Sports Men's Basketball Rookie of the Year are. En nomination pour le trophée Dr. Peter Mullins présenté à la recrue de l'année en basketball masculin U Sport 2024, des sports universitaires de l'Atlantique, from the AUS, Coet Thomas, St. Francis Xavier University, Université St. Francis Xavier, du réseau du sport étudiant du Québec, from the RCQ, Willem Mwanza, Université Laval University, du sport universitaire de l'Ontario, from the OUA, Xavier Spencer, Université Carleton University, et de l'Association West Canadienne, from Canada West, Easton Thim, University of Saskatchewan, Université de la Saskatchewan, le lauréat du trophée Dr. Peter Mullins décerné à la recrue de l'année en basketball masculin U Sport est, the winner of the Dr. Peter Mullins Award for U Sports Rookie of the Year in Men's Basketball is Xavier Spencer, Université Carleton University. Here are the nominees for the Stuart W. Aberdeen Memorial Trophy presented to the 2024 Fox 40 U Sports Men's Basketball Coach of the Year. Voici les candidats pour le trophée commémoratif Stuart W. Aberdeen présenté à l'entraîneur de l'année Fox 40 U Sport en basketball masculin. Des sports universitaires de l'Atlantique, from the AUS, Jonah Tossig, Université St. Mary's University. Du réseau du sport étudiant du Québec, from the RCQ, Rasko Popovich, Université Concordia University. Du sport universitaire de l'Ontario, from the OUA, Steph Berry, Université Queen's University. Et de l'Association West Canadienne, from Canada West, Craig Beaucamp, University of Victoria, Université de Victoria. Le lauréat du trophée commémoratif Stuart W. Aberdeen et le prix Fox 40 présenté à l'entraîneur de l'année est... The winner of the Stuart W. Aberdeen Memorial Trophy and the Fox 40 U Sports Men's Basketball Coach of the Year is Craig Beaucamp, University of Victoria, Université de Victoria. They don't do it for the likes or for the shares. They do it for the fun of it, for the thrill, for the camaraderie, for the memories. CBC Sports, just because they love it. Hey, you sports fans, check out shop.usports.ca for this week's promotional item from the Nike Team Collection. Visitez le shop.usports.ca pour en profiter de la promotion de la semaine de la collection Nike Team. I'm here for my 3.30 with a Mr. Greer. Of course, we've confirmed coverage. The patient will be right with you.
Dr. Patel, the patient will see you now. Health coverage should put you first. Only Green Shield combines your health care and benefits coverage all in one place. Green Shield, better health for all. It's that moment again, the one you dream of every night. La seule chose qui te préoccupe, c'est la gloire. Le cheminement de la réussite. Of pushing yourself further than ever before. But the true glory is in the shadows. Les sacrifices que tu fais. Quand toutes les chances sont contre toi. When you can't push one more second. Chase the glory. Viseo. Welcome back here to halftime. It's a 48-42 lead for UCAM over Winnipeg. Greg, we look at these halftime stats. Both teams shot the ball very well at around 42 to 46%. Uh, the three-point shots were almost impeccable. And uh, this might come down to a last shot scenario, which, of course, Winnipeg does not want to have, given what happened to them yesterday against Queens. So what's the key now going towards the second half, starting off with UCAM? Well, UCAM continues to control the battle in terms of the rebounding. I mean, they only hold a one differential in terms of 20 to 19 but they've got six offensive rebounds which has led to nine second chance points then keep that bench going at this point 17 points off the bench for whoever has come in and trip contributed for mario joseph and company it's been a team effort off the bat and then you look at the westman on the other side someone's got to step up beside sean Moreno. i mean we know donald stewart's out of this game with an injury suffered in their quarterfinal loss yesterday Brandon's been spectacular, six of seven from the field. Perfect from the land beyond four three-pointers. He's got a game high, 18, but Alexander, Malachi Alexander's got six. Mikhail Mikhailov's got six. Ryan Loop's got five. So who's going to be the second guy to come and emerge for the Westman is the key here. That's going to be key for Winnipeg, right? I mean, look, they are 20 minutes away from either extending their season by one more game or coming to an end today at uh, Laval and uh, again this is a team that's had history here they played at Laval during the Christmas holidays uh, which they defeated the uh, home school Laval Rougeur 85-68 so they are 1-0 against Quebec competition this season but they have a lot of work to do in the second half here and uh, I'm curious to see how the rotations will be for both teams uh, especially for Mario Joseph who went more youth than he normally does in a game that again has meaning of pride than medals. Well, it's about the experience for the young guys now here at this point, too. But for the Westmen, I mean, you look at the turnovers from yesterday. They had 18 turnovers. That accounts for 15 points in their loss. And then today, already seven turnovers in the first half. But they've done a better job at protecting themselves off those turnovers. Only four points for this seat today. And so for Mario Joseph and company, I mean, you want to pay. Make them pay every single time. You get it out in transition, run in and gun in. Well, we'll see how this plays out in the second half action here. We are from St. Paul, Quebec. You're watching the 2024 Men's U Sports Men's National Championships presented by Green Shield and Michelob Light on CBC Sports. Stay tuned. Up next, second half from St. Paul.
Welcome back here to Laval, Quebec. It is a 48-42 lead for UCAM over Winnipeg. Great Camp Mo Con. We are uh, on game number five of 11. We're almost at, we're at almost the halfway point of this tournament. I mean, it's just going to get more and more exciting as we go along here, partner. I hope so. I hope so. If it doesn't, we're in trouble. We're in trouble. I mean, they've produced so far. All the teams in this tournament have been great defensively coming into this tournament. And outside that Dalhousie massacre yesterday, it's been very competitive across the board. It has been indeed. And uh, we have a, a good one coming up next. Brock against Uvic. And here is Hydara on the twist and turn. No good. McAuliffe on the rebound. And uh, that Brock Uvic game, um, you know, it could have been easily a, a Final Four game than where we are right now. Well, it's a shocking upset of the of the tournament and perhaps in the last couple decades as Mikhailov gets squeezed on the baseline there. Good body jockeying there by the Citadel and, and that of Shek Dosso. But they had the player of the year, one of the best players in the country, and Diego Mafia and Elias Ralph. That one-two punch was supposed to create ripples in this tournament and now they're in the consolation bracket. Yeah, of course, no Donald Stewart today as he had an upper body injury. Here is Seville with it, with the teardrop. The floater no good. Rebound, Dosu going up. No good on that one. McAuliffe in a, in a tug of war in a 50-50. And McAuliffe has given his uh, viewpoint that, hey, it wasn't called at the other end of the court. Oh, yeah, he's been out-muscled on two straight possessions, which is a rarity for this young man. And he's still pleading his case here to the officials. But... A couple of times you've seen this from the Westmen where they're asking about the call, then they respect it at the end of the day, which is kudos to them. But, I mean, Donald Stewart being out, you wonder if there was the flip side of the bracket here, would he have played? We'll never know. It's the, uh, it's the hidden files of the Winnipeg Westman uh, approach to this game. We will never know. And right now, Dosu's 0 for 1. He's 1 for 3 so far from the line this afternoon. And he's now 2 for 4. Both okay. teams efficient in terms of shooting this afternoon. 41% for the Citadel, 47% for the Westman, despite being down by seven. And here is Moranin, who can definitely shoot it. Give him an angle, and he will kill you with that. And here he is, watched by Hadara. Alexander trying to jockey inside, seals for Gordo. Gordo cannot finish off. Might have been impacted by Dosu, who's a shot-blocking artist out there for the Citadel. And Carajo, draw pass, Seville coming through the paint he lost it midway and it's going back over to the Westman down by touchdown and that'll be their first steal of the afternoon seven in the first half by the number three seed Alexander pinpoint accuracy on that shot and they're down by four 36 percent in the first half their six three-pointer eight makes by the seed dead in the first half and now Dara back with it trying to work his way through and Carajo will finish that playoff. The interplay was perfect on that with those two going at it. High low, just creeping on the baseline there as Alexander goes to work the other way. They're up by six as we have 8-12 left in this third quarter play. Gordo, here's Mikhailov against of Dosu. A lot of elbowing between these two. And they're still elbowing right now. And Mikhailov will come up short on the elbow finish. And now it is back to Carajo as he will slow the pace over to Hydara, playing his potentially the last game unless they win today. Carajo, back door, Doso in for two. That's six in the paint for him. He's been a poacher of points. His heat mat has been inside the paint. Moranin with the stretch outlet there. Mikhailov for two there, but it's Moranin who gets beat on the inside on the help, and he's not going to win that matchup in the paint. No, he won't indeed. It's still a six-point lead, and it caught two minds for Hadara. And uh, unfortunately, the um, geography of positioning for these players have been uh, not so pristine of where they are. On the court, that's now I think the fourth time it's happened to UCAM with the feet going out of bounds. Yeah, we saw that partner just as you mentioned there in the first half a number of times where again just out in transition they're lost defensively. A three for Mensa, front rim rebound Alexander and he will not finish and he's had a great game this afternoon for the Westman. Well, he's looking at his hands after took a look at the official, but he kind of just threw that up with a prayer hoping for the call. Now you weren't going to give it to him, so that was box. Set up on the inbound here. Around an inbounder. Mikhailov. He will fancy the shot, and he will miss the shot. Rebounded by Hadara. Now 4-7 from the field. He's got eight points. Moran leads all scores with 18. Carajo, backdoor. Doso, rejected by Gordo, but that will be a foul instead as he met at the apex of the rim. And unfortunately for Gordo, he got called for it. Well, I mean, after the first half and a couple of highlight reel dunks, didn't want to have another one happen to his teammate there and just... A flush follow through on the backside wrist there. He'll be subbed out as is Mikhailov. And then you have Luke and John will check back into the game. 
And here is Doso. Uh, he's been quite the uh, bulldozer machine out there. And he misses the first free throw. That lacked any bulldozer from his part in that free throw. Time. I mean, great game by him so far with 12 points to lead the team. The senior only averages 4.3 a game, but his 17 blocks first overall in the rest during the regular season and ninth in terms of offensive rebounds as well. Back with it is Moranin as he will bring it in as we're in the south of seven in this third quarter play. Moranin, Jean him, jumper. And that lacked the purchase required, and now it is Gallagher back on the front foot, up by six. And that went off the foot of Alexander and remains with UCAM with a 6.53 left in this third quarter. And the script remains the same as we're not at a five apiece in terms of the scoring in this third quarter, but both teams content to push the pace in transition. But Dosso already into double-double with the 12 points and 10 rebounds. And that pass sent back towards the UCAM campus. Uh, by Hadara for Jean, and there's a bit of a communication here with Seville and McFan and Jean. And they continue to exchange it here as they'll get back and they'll go to the soft full court press here just to slow Moran and down into the half court. You can see the high screen coming here. And here is Moran swung around the protractor, sidecar pass back out to Alexander. And now it's the lower block, it goes to Thomas using his deltoids. Thomas around Carrojo. And he's going to be called for the foul, Carrojo. And now Thomas will go to the line, shooting 75% for the season. Well, he really pushed that shot there, but he creates good extension with the left elbow there inside the paint as a pair of substitutions coming from Mario Joseph and company. And the free throw line so far today has been kind to the Westmen. 7 of 9 for 78% compared to 5 and 9, 56% for the number three seed. As Diaz off the miss there will substitute pending Whoa. the make. He was a little bit over anxious because he almost came in and fell on his face, actually. And uh, that might have been on the Shaq and Fool Looper highlights for the year. I mean, the freshman woes as that gets altered and should count there. It will be counting. And it's a five point lead for the Cedar over the Westman. I'm, I'm curious whether they're going to call a couple of these guys on the drawstrings as well, because technically that should be tucked in. You got about three Cedar Dan out there with the drawstring open. Uh, the aesthetics. And here is Kevin Seville, who is aesthetic. And now to Louis Jeune. Jumper inside the paint, and that is off the mark. Rebound right to Winnipeg. This could be the run now for the Westman, down by five. Contested by Alexander there. On the spin, Alexander rejected by Cayo, and now over to Steven Diaz. Switch of play, Seville around one, around two. Louis Jeune up and over, in for the two, and they're back up by seven. Timeout called. Or now, will this be a timeout officially? And discussing it, whether it's a late substitution again where both sides trying to look to each other to see if anything's going to be called, but it'll just be a substitution. Gore will wait by the table there. And he will have to wait. And that is, uh, it's always fascinating when that horn comes on, everyone freezes up. What just happened, and that's what just happened right now. They all froze up what's going on here. So. And they're going to give him the substitution. So it's a matter of how quickly do you get to the scorer's table and notify it that crew that you want to get into the game as Moran and will check out here. 18 points in the first half, scoreless here in the second half. And one to two full court press. Good ball movement though. Winner of this game will play the winner of Uvic against against Brock on Sunday afternoon. And here's Louis Jeune trying to reaffirm that. And he misses the lip. Seville on the putback. And now UCAM is up 57-48. Timeout call on the court. 5.34 left in this third quarter play. You're watching the 2024 U Sports Men's National Final Eight. Brought to you by Green Shield and Michelob Light on CBC Sports. Oh, no! Oh You're back! Yes. The exchange was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> have the power to inspire and impact the climate. Hi, I'm here for my 3.30 with a Mr. Greer. Of course, we've confirmed coverage. The patient will be right with you.
Dr. Patel, the patient will see you now. Health coverage should put you first. Only Green Shield combines your health care and benefits coverage all in one place. Green Shield, better health for all. Welcome back here to the 2024 Men's U Sports National Championship for Basketball. Don't forget, we have the 2024 U Sports Men's Volleyball Championship is headed to the campus of Queen's University in Kingston, Ontario, March 14th to the 17th. Tournament packages and single game tickets are on sale. Click the QR code on the screen and visit gales.com, universitytickets.com to order your tickets today. The 2024 U Sports Men's Volleyball Championship in Kingston, Ontario chase the glory and right now a little later on today queens look to chase the glory and maybe punch their ticket to the gold medal game all big match up against ottawa and all oua one as it goes off the foot of diaz there and then talk about chasing the glory on the other side i mean look at the hosts here pulling off an upset of you could say the century in some cases where they knock off the number one seed and now we'll play the dalhousie tigers who looked seriously dangerous yesterday with Christie going off in that game. And speaking to those this morning here at the, at the uh, arena, uh, some are saying it is the greatest upset in uh, U Sports history for basketball with the one losing to an eight. And here is Cayo and well repelled by Gordo. Seville now will calm things down back over to Louis Jean. From 17, front iron. This will go back over to Alexander. Besides, to Mike Kyloff lost that battle there, out transition Alexander. And backing over is Alexander, watched by Seville. They will slow it down. They got four on the right. And now here is McAuliffe, isolated against Diaz. Backdoor, Alexander, and rebounded by Diaz. And some thought it might have been a foul from the Winnipeg viewpoint. Well, he just went right into Diaz there because McAuliffe draws the double, and then he slips it out to Alexander. Instead of taking the open jumper, he decided to go size up the freshman. 4-3 left in this third quarter play, and UCAM's up by nine over... Winnipeg trying to free up Civil on the backside corner there. Cayo, two left in the shot clock. At the death and gets it in. Now they're up by, by 59 48 lead. Good looking shot there. He's got four points now. Dossel Jun with 23 of the team's 59. Moran is still the only player in double figures at 18. A bit of a skid here for the Westman. And there's a whistle. Mikhailov was in a tangle with Cayo. And that will stop playing. That will be, I believe, the second team foul on UCAM in this quarter. And it's the first time he actually draws a call in the paint there as well as Carrojo with three fouls for the number three seated. And on the other side, no one in foul trouble yet. Mikhailov and Luke with a pair apiece. 59-48 lead, 4.03 left. Game number one of day number two. And we got three more to go today. And we'll have Brock and Uvic next. And then after that, We'll have the semifinal games and Scott in there. Unfortunately, it will be a foul on Kayo. And that will be his second in the last literally two seconds of play. Uh, Sits it then holding the advantage here in their third quarter after being knotted at 18 apiece after the first quarter. They won the second by six. They're winning the third by five. Foul shots, two at the line for the Westmen. And Jarrell will go to the line as he got hit by Seville. So in a matter of moments, uh, UCAM went from one team foul to now four uh, team fouls. And it is Jero at the line shooting 61% from Winnipeg, Manitoba. All rookie team member, average 6.5 points per game, 51% from the field. This game so far, outside of a made free throw, has been held scoreless in terms of shot attempts. Yeah, he had 18 points against the University of Alberta. And here he is on the cleanup, missing that one. And right back to Winnipeg it comes. And a new 14 as we're south of four. Eyes were bigger than the basket on that one. Good and follow. The basket from Cam Cam is in. And now they're down by eight against the Citadin. One freshman can't get it done. The other one steps up for his buddy. And the Rolls Royce in Seville gets it over the baby Bentley and Jaro. And this goes back over to the... 10-point number now for the Citadin. And now he's into double figures. Again, those offensive rebounds starting to add up. They've got nine now. That's the count for 12 second-chance points. Back open three from the 45. Driving Mikhailov, and that was last touch by Diaz. It remains Winnipeg ball 
with seven left in the shot clock. Yeah, he had the wing shot initially, and he thought better, and he just tried to squeeze that and uh, stretching himself there, trying to find Mikhailov inside. They'll get a second crack at it on the baseline. And now at the end line will be Moranin, as he will be watched by Louis Jeune. Back to that box format on the inbound here. And they'll try and free up Nelson in the rim, and then you see Jaro in the pocket corner. Jaro now once again watched by Kayo. Here's Luke's three. Back heel, rebound, Louis Jean up ahead. Doso is all by himself as he will await for the Sky Blue team to come through. And Louis Jean bamboozling Cam Cam at the end line and now gets it up to 12. Well, I wouldn't say bamboozle so much as he thought he had Luke helping on the baseline there, which is why he gave him that little angle. Then he flushes back out and they get beat for two. And right there, the serene finish from Moranin, and now they're down by eight. Excellent game so far. Seven of nine from the field now for a game high 20 points. Open corner pocket three. Cayo cannot get it up to 13. Rebound right over to Mensa as we're now in the final 230 this third quarter play. Yeah, Mensa, the starting lineup's got four points, three rebounds. And Cayo will be called for the foul. Three shots coming up here for Moranin and for seven of Cayo. Uh, already three fouls in the span of three minutes play something you don't want here but he's been a little more aggressive than he probably anticipated and the problem is you send a senior to the line who's 90 percent from the charity stripe and you see that waiting a hesitation on the baseline there and that little shoulder fake and that's what i'm talking about that help he thought he had luke and luke keeps his responsibilities so about I'll the paint i'll blame ryan luke for being bamboozled by illusion timeout call in the court 63-53 lead for you, Camel, for Winnipeg. Stay tuned here for the 2024 U Sports Men's National Final Eight. Brought to you by Green Shield and Michelob Lights. Welcome back here. You see the highlights from this third quarter action. Louis Jeune slashing his way through in that uh, transition play. And then you look at Moran, and he's been absolutely fabulous today. Yeah, I mean, he's fourth all-time in assists, and that's a big reason why his dribble penetration able to draw the attention of so many different players. And then you see the strip there and one of the many turnovers and could convert on the follow-through by the city then in terms of Kevin Civil getting into double figures as Moran and hits the first free throw of three. Moran will have another two chances here. They're down by nine. We'll love to get this down to seven if they can. They shoot 70% on the season average. 13 makes. That's eighth and tenth respectively in that category, in those categories. And they're 10 to 13 so far for 77% in this game. Well, you're in that part of the country, the Can West territory of, of uh, basketball. What do you forecast for the Westman next year in terms of uh, what they could do? Again, UBC is hosting the Nationals, so there is going to be one less spot, perhaps, in terms of the uh, allocation of seeds and stuff. Well, Moran's not a fifth-year senior, so he does have an opportunity to return. But, I mean, they're dangerous as they come. Between them and Vic, I fully expect those two teams to be in the thick of things come next March once again. Perhaps those two teams will join UBC next year, the site of the 2025 men's Nationals. Beautiful Look, Vancouver, BC. And they keep switching off here. Moranin. He's not switched off. He's locked in. And now they're down by four. He's gone on a 6 0 run all by himself. And this will be Winnipeg ball. And then our timeout here. And he's perfect from the Lambion still. 26 points. Look at him. Just waits him out. Keeps hedging to that right side. A little step back hand comes up too late. And he converts again. I mean, the kid's been automatic today. It's spectacular performance. 26 points so far. Here is Alexander working his way through. Alexander still with it. And the GPS brought him to the destination of two. And they're now down by two on an 8 0 run. And they're going to a full court press here, 2 2 1. And they were trying to, uh, Alexander tried to squeeze on the right side, didn't see enough traffic space, so he decided to go to the left. Open shot coming through. Briere, kick out. 
Louis Jeanne for three. No, he'll offer option B. Diaz, the sharpshooter, the flamethrower missing that one, and a whistle and a foul. And it appears Miranda might be called for that against Dosu, which was a size mismatch. Yeah, he's just looking over. He's like, no, it can't be me in this situation. But instead, there'll be a foul on the seat today. And then Miranda will get to saunter his way across the timeline and uh, casually walk to the free throw line. And just like that, the bonus situation where they had those three fouls and a, you know, a blink of an eye has cost them as he'll get a pair of free throws and as automatic as they come and this game quickly could be dotted at 63 and now they've outscored them by five here in the third quarter. Well, it has not been, has not been easy in the eye for Mario Josef. They were up 10 coasting along here and now we are going to be on the cusp of parity and we won't be on the cusp of parity. It is still a one point lead for UCAM with 115 left in this quarter. Do you believe in that announcer's jinx thing or no? Uh, I'll tell you a story on the next uh, situation here. So I was calling the Sage of Provincials last weekend in Montreal. Lujan back with it. Here's Diaz. And there was a free throw shooter for, uh, I believe, St. Foix Quebec, the women's team, and a whistle and a foul. And this will be Hilaire who got impeded with 58.4 left. And there was a player for the dynamic to St. Foix, just right here, just down the road from where we are. During the regular season, she was 100% from the free throw line, about 17 for 17. She was, she was at the line for the first game on Friday afternoon. And I go, I, I forget her name, I apologize, but she is 17 to 17, clank. Did you mention the stat before she I shot did, it? I did, I did, I did, she clanked it. Could and she hear you from where you no, were broadcasting? No, I was courtside, I don't think she heard me there, but Hiller hits that first free throw, scoring about three a game. A 70% free throw shooter. So all weekend long, my, my colleagues I was working with, because we did a bilingual broadcast, uh, kept on reminding me, you know, you are the jinx. I'm like, <laughs> I guess I am. And that goes through, and now it's a three-point lead for the Citadang as we're in the final 56 seconds of play in this third quarter of action. And they're going to size up again, just check him and make him work to get into that half-court set as they try and free up Can Cam on the side. Here is Luke trying to free himself through. And this will remain Winnipeg ball as Louis Jean took a shot to the neck area. Well, he's got to step the freshman on Dossel there in the senior. But again, just the size and understanding where he's going with the ball. He's able to close off the real estate at the end of the play. Here's Morano, who's had amazing real estate prices so far with the shooting. And here he is with four left in the shot clock, stripped away by Briere. And they see that arrow on the run. Louis Jean on the left wing, drop pass to Briere. Switcher play, Hilaire. And he got caught. And he's not happy about that. You see Moran and again just wincing for a second there as he went towards the bike over there to check himself. He's, he's, he's a warrior right now. I mean, there, he's asking a lot with uh, Stewart out of this game already before it even started. And the senior is trying to get this team into Sunday. Of course, he got hurt in the first half on his right side. And now here's Alexander on the right side. And he went high off the angle of the window. And they're down by one. You get clear at the end of that, too. Fading away from the basket. That's a good finish there. Eight seconds left in this third quarter play. Here's Diaz. Hilaire. And one. Using the trickery and magic of the UCAM style and profile. He will go to the line for a potential three-point sequence. And the freshman does the right thing here, as you'll see. It's a 2-3 zone, and they start cheating up really high. And how do you beat a zone? You flash on the inside just like that, and not able to stay vertical as Mensa and a better finish by the young man. He'll go to the line for one more. So UCAM will have the lead. And with 2.2 left, the Westman will have the last action of this third quarter play. And they're not going to roll the dice here in terms of giving a shot opportunity. So they'll go in their stack formation four across here with a home run hit going. And they go for the short grounder. And here's the Hail Mary. And that will go into the first row of the facility. No Cam Cam on the missed shot. So at the end of three, UCAM's up by four, 68-64. You're watching the 2024 U Sports Men's Final Eight from St. Paul, Quebec, presented by Green Shield and Michelob Light on CBC Sports. They don't do it for the likes or for the shares. They do it for the fun of it, for the thrill, for the camaraderie, for the memories. CBC Sports, just because they love it. Hi, I'm here for my 3.30 with a Mr. Greer. Of course, we've confirmed coverage. The patient will be right with you.
Dr. Patel, the patient will see you now. Health coverage should put you first. Only Green Shield combines your health care and benefits coverage all in one place. Green Shield, better health for all. Hey, you sports fans, check out shop.usports.ca for this week's promotional item from the Nike Team Collection. Visitez le shop.usports.ca pour en profiter de la promotion de la semaine de la collection Nike Team. Welcome back here. It is gold medal weekend on Sunday. It is 6 p.m. tip-off on CBC Sports and TV Sport. We don't know who's going to be there yet. We'll find out in about uh, eight hours from now uh, if it will be Brock. Uh, sorry, it will be Queens or Ottawa or Dow or Laval. We'll find out, and we'll have our final two. And McAuliffe getting the two to make it a two-point gap between them and UCAM. A whip pass on the inside, authoritative left hand there, and there's fifth of fifth assist to the game. McKayloff now double-double at 10 points, 11 rebounds. Moranin leads all scorers. Exquisite afternoon. 27 points off 8 of 10 shooting, including 5 of 5 from the land beyond. Three players in double figures. Foul on the floor there for the Citadel. Quincy Louis-Jean leads all scorers for the home side, we'll call it, at this point with 13. And then Dalso with 12 and Kevin Civil with 10. And with that, it'll be shut out here. First team foul on the Westman, and now it will be Hydaro. So they bring back the big hitters for the Cidadin, Carajo, along with Doso, Seville, and Hydaro. Here's what? Seville. On the 2-3, back out. Carajo, round one, around two, going around three, and he will find the fourth option to Seville. Nylon from the 45. The ninth three-pointer off 24 attempts now. I was going to say the Westman have done a good job of cleaning up the defensive boards here. Only one in the second half for the Citadel after having eight in the first half. Almost miscommunication there. Moran in a little frustrated, calling for that high screen from Mikhailov. And they hit about nine, nine threes per game. And here is uh, Moran in. He'll option for B, Alexander. Can't hit it on the 50-50 recover by Can Cam. A new 14 for the Westman. And here is Alexander again, stopping, pivoting, up in the air. No good, rebound, whistle. And this goes the other way in favor of UCAM. Mikhailov called on the rebounding foul there. That'll be his third, so not dire situation yet. But he's got to start being careful because, again, with Stewart out and Mensa, your other main player here in the rotation, it's going to come down to him staying healthy in terms of staying clean in foul troubles the last 8.30 here. Seville with it, watched by Cancam. And now Seville trying to get around Cancam. He will option for Hydara in the paint. Hydara with the left, and he lost it to Mikhailov. And now the Westmen are on the run, two on two. Mikhailov will stop now, moving forward here. And he goes back to Alexander. Moranin. A little smaller in height against Hydara. Se Seville and Hydara going at it right now. And here he is Moranin on the high-low. Well repelled by Dosu. And it goes back over to Seville the other way. And he recovered on the slip screen there by Mikhailov to the rim. So good job by them defensively. And that is a miss right there. And this will go back the other way. Both teams in terms of shooting percentage still above 40% at this point. The Westman at 43 and 35% from the land beyond. Cidadan at 45%. So barely even across the board. Those second chance points, 14 to 6 for the number three seed and those bench points continue to be huge. 28, though they had 17 in the first half. And here is Moranin, who's been absolutely ruthless out there, sublime at times. But again, they're down by five with 7.40 left in their season to extend it or force overtime. Go back to that 2-3 zone look. Mikhailov in against Kato Zhou and Mikhailov using his upper body strength. He worked out this morning. You see the 
dividends being paid off by him. Oh, you see a core twist there. We'll call it a Russian twist in terms of swinging the ball and that ab movement. And he actually pushed the ball into his stomach areas. The shot missed there to create that separation and push him underneath the net. And this goes back over here as Winnipeg. Gordo back with it against Osu. We, uh, Alexander McAuliffe on two points in the last trip, down by three. And he is trapped by two. Back out to Alexander, who knocks over Seville. That's going to be a charge. And we go back to the way south of seven. McAuliffe's going to get teed up here if he's not careful because he's trying to question everything. And that call, you see him step out in that situation. I was wondering what was going to happen here as Seville slides back out there and I I would say that is in that case I think they got that call wrong I think that's a defensive foul Alexander's trying to sweep in that situation and Civil has not had his feet planted and he's using his momentum towards him but regardless of the fact Citadel will get the ball and they'll sit that zone a little higher to start and they'll start sinking back in that's what you call being a high IQ player here's Seville who is a high IQ player and he gets another two they're up by five he had a uh, tough outing in the second half yesterday after having double figures. He now leads the team in scoring at 15 points off 6 of 13 shooting, including three three-pointers. Moranin trying to work his way through. And here is Gordo, who's had a quiet day so far, and he almost got pickpocketed by Hadara. Down low to Alexander. This goes off of his foot. No, nope, he last touch by UCAM. It remains with the Westman with three left in the shot clock. So the uh, options are far and few for what you can do with three seconds left in the clock. I mean, this team won nine, eight of the last nine games coming into the championship tournament here. But you look for a quick hitter on the seal on the inside, potentially first for Mikhailov. And then they'll look to Gordo Alexander, their other shooter. Mikhailov did not get what he wanted. The execution was there, but the finish was not. And now Kanojo rejected by Mensa. And it goes back to Alexander. He's got Mikhailov up ahead with the Euro. First class, no class on that play. Mikhailov hooked by Hilaire. And the utter humanity on the court. Bodies on the floor. And Mikhailov will go to the line for two free throws. That's all on the line with 6.07 to go and a five-point lead for the number three seed. But Alexander starts that transition play by looking behind him to see what kind of numbers he has. And then he decides to call his own. There'll be a substitution here, Goro for Jarrell, but Mikhailov will end up going to the line as he is kind of uh, wrapped around affectionately there as he's trying to go up to the rim. Mikhailov at the line. No free throws today so far, but he's got 12 and 12. He is uh, a rebounding machine. He's got magnets in his hands when it comes to rebounding so far this year for the Westman. And he's talking about his value for what he brings on the court. Mikhailov this season, um, eight and a half rebounds per game. Second offensively with 65 boards. And I mean, like I said, a percentage shooter, six in the Can West and averages 14 a game. Hilaire cannot get that in. Ken Ojo skying through. And this will go out. Last touch by Winnipeg. 5.56 left. It remains a four point lead for the Citadel over the Westman. And that's the voice of Greg Campbell. I'm Mo Khan here on this uh, Saturday afternoon. Or we're on the uh, near midpoint of this tournament uh, from St. Paul, Quebec. The tournament's been excellent so far from the host to the competition on the dance floor, we'll call it here. And as we get into the later stages or your Saturday Saturday evening, it's just going to get more and more exciting, that and tango. Unfortunately for that possession, it just lacked anything. And this goes back over to the Westman with 544 left in this quarter play. And Quincy Louis Jun is going to check back in second team all-star this year. Six in terms of points per game, a hair under 13. and. First in terms of steals per game with 2.1 he averaged on the regular season. Here's Moranin back with it. Moranin trying to work his magic again down by four, 540 left. Again, they lost by one to Queens at the death on the last second shot and rejected by Silas against Mensa. And they want to avoid that here as they're down by four with 530 left. This game is a whistle, is a foul. Hilaire will be called for that. That will be the second team foul on UCAM. And for Hilaire, I believe that's personal foul number two. Well, the dribble handoff initially set up there by Moranin, and then he'll go to the wing, waiting for that double screen to come to free him up. And then just he's so crafty with the ball at this point, especially with his head bob and movement. A substitution will.
come back out of Samuel Kyle. We'll check back into the game. Four points, two of six shooting in a pair of rebounds so far. Hilaire there, and now back over comes. Here is Moran and with it. 5.27 left in this quarter play. High low, Metza! That's that Horns look. They love that is a staple look, and they accepted the first screen from Mensa, and then Mensa flashed hard off the screen, and it's just spot on the money. That's the reason why he's fourth all-time in assists in program history. He's fifth of the game. Seville, back door, Doso stripped, whistle, foul. 5.07 left in this ballgame, down by two is Munipe. So they'll just say it's off. Actually, Mensa lasts on the strip there, but... It's been a play that they've been hedging their bets all afternoon. You see in the nice little flush inside for two off the sweet bounce pass, and it's an effective one of that. But you look at the other end, they, they hedge their bets in terms of this 2-3 zone, and then someone from the seat that then sits on the baseline at all times, and they try and thread the needle. Open for Seville from the center arc. Right down St. Catherine Street. They're back up by five. Late close by Gerald there, and he's frustrated at that. And Civil's now got 18 to lead the home side. Moranin, rebound right to Hydara, and uh, McAuliffe not happy about that. Rare miss by him, only his third of the afternoon now, 8 of 11, 27 points and 6 assists. Hydara behind the back, kicking it out. Louis Jean, back-to-back threes. No, not that time for UCAM. And UCAM now in 10 threes. McAuliffe, and the eye of the needle not met, recovered by Alexander, and back over to Luca Cubs. Good job settling down and deferring to the block of the bigger Here man. Here is Mikhailov with it on the turn against Dosu. In for two. Oh, he got him late on that one, too. He's frustrated because he had him inside, and the positioning was good by the defender. Then that little extra pump fake was just enough. Louis Jean, teardrop. He's got that easy. Now back up by five over Winnipeg. Well, it's which way do you want to get killed in that situation? Because, again, they have someone sitting on the baseline there waiting, and then... Mikhailov decides to defer and allow him with the floater, and he converts. Moran in for three. And a rebound, last touch by UCAM. Winnipeg ball, 3-3-9 left in this quarter play. And right now, both teams are down to the dying embers of this game here. Timeout call on the court. 3-3-9 left in this quarter play. It is UCAM 78, Winnipeg 73. You're watching the 2024 U-Sports Men's National Final Eight. Presented by Green Shield, Michelob Light on CMC Sports. They don't do it for the likes or for the shares. They do it for the fun of it, for the thrill, for the camaraderie, for the memories. CBC Sports, just because they love it. Hi, I'm here for my 3.30 with a Mr. Greer. Of course, we've confirmed coverage. The patient will be right with you. Dr. Patel, the patient will see you now. Health coverage should put you first. Only Green Shield combines your health care and benefits coverage all in one place. Green Shield, better health for all. Hey, you sports fans, check out shop.usports.ca for this week's promotional item from the Nike Team Collection. Visit the shop.usports.ca to profit of the promotion of the semaine of the collection Nike Team. Welcome back. Uh, we got one more in here in the Constellation round, which would be UVic against Brock. And then after that, we got the uh, semifinal games tonight here, which you can come. Uh, tickets are very limited. Laval Dalhousie is the one that everyone wants because it's the last game, the APM game. Uh, but if you want to come check out great basketball, we do have uh, the other semifinal game, Ottawa Queens at 6 p.m. And if tickets are available, get it because they're going quick. And this building's going to be packed. We talked about how loud it was in last night's broadcast, and they were about, what would you say, four-fifths, three-quarters full? Yeah, about 80%. It, full, it's yeah. it's going to be standing room only for a team that's number eight seed trying to advance to their championship final here. Hosting it. And now Hydara is snatching that ball away from Alexander. And Seville now with it, trying to put Winnipeg in a vice grip up by five. Nice Make little, it seven. Nice little teardrop floater there after the crossover left to right into lane, pulled up and knocks it down and makes him pay off the turnover there. 12 points to the tune of 12 turnovers to the tune of nine points. And now back over comes McAuliffe from the center arc. 
Off the iron, rebounded by Seville. This could be the moment now for the UCAM as he pushes it up ahead. Seville, extra pass, Dosu, and he is fouled. And will go to the line for two, and they're up by seven with 3.06 left. Moranin gets with, away with the initial push foul there as he just defers. They know he's beat on the inside track to the lane, but starting to put their foot to the throttle here for the Citadel. And now Dosu, who started the game, has been a backup for the most of the season for the Citadel. Not the most uh, perfect free throw shooter out there for the UCAM attack. And uh, with a seven point lead, they have this and looking to add some gloss to the lead of seven. He's in a double double as well. 12 points, 12 rebounds. But two, to that. Yeah, two, two of eight from the line now for 25%. What if they could have been up by uh, 13? Could have, would have, should have, though, right? And now here's Alexander musting his way through, and he's earned that two pointer. And oh, this is going to be a, a tech on Alexander for saying something to someone, and that will give UCAM a free throw here. An unnecessary one. I think it was Doso he's talking to at the end there as well, but did not have a lot of room to negotiate in the paint there to begin with. And they've been frustrated by the non calls all afternoon, and finally one of the Westmen gets teed off. And so we'll punish them on that technical foul. They're up by six and possession in favor of UCAM. You get the guy who's 78% in the regular season, the fifth year senior, third in that category overall. And I'll walk it back here in just under three minutes. The lead has a comfortable six right now. And now a conversation there as they get things organized. And now Laval, site of this final eight. Could be the first one for UCAM here in a long time. They've had some... Uh, Hiccups playing in St. Foy in recent history and now trying to get their win at the tournament, which would give them another day of basketball tomorrow as they play in the 12 o'clock game. Go with that four out, one in the post look here. Kayo against Mikhailov. He left in the shot clock. Kick out, extra pass. Louis Jean in the paint from the free throw line and he will not connect. Rebound right over to Jaro and now with 2.23 left. It is go time for the Westman. Yeah, it starts and finishes with Moran in here, the game's leading scorer at 27. Moran in high, low, McAuliffe open and one. Seville will be the culprit, and now Winnipeg back this game, courtesy of McAuliffe. I mean, look at that facilitation distribution at the end. Just rides that high screen, and then look, card crashed by McAuliffe as there's a screen sent there by Jaro for Mikhailov, and then just perfect execution on the lob and the follow through. And Mikhailov's a little bit to Winston in pain as he took a hard hit hitting the ground. And he got undercut there by Civil as well. The takeoff was 10.0, but the landing was about 4.5. Oh, it's a dangerous one. I'm not sure how you can expect him to stick the landing there. Awkward as he's launching for that ball. And we're down to a... Uh, 81-78 lead. One score game here for the Citadel. And now him and Moranin combined 45 of the team's 78. And with it is Louisian over. And now watched by the Westman and Seville trying to get around when it pays defending. No look pass. Louisian and his size 13s are out of bounds. And now Winnipeg has a chance to tie it up with a three. You're going to look at the turnovers again for this team as being the story of this game if they lose. I mean, they've done a better job compared to yesterday, just their 13th turnover. But it was 24 turnovers to the tune of 23 points in their loss yesterday. And now 13 tur turnovers and 14 points pending what happens here. Moranin bouncing back. Plenty of time left in the shot clock. Gyro, quick hands. Kayo with the help of Louis Jean, and now UCAM's back on the pedal, and they have a chance to put the dagger into the hearts of Winnipeg. They had the look they wanted to, but they're going to go against the smaller Moran and draw the double and kick it around the world. Seville, kick out, Kayo, Louis Jean, putting Winnipeg to the sword, perhaps. They're up by a score of 84 78. And Seville, this will go out of bounds, last touch by Kim Seville. And Winnipeg now down to 81 seconds, down by six. That's just that great execution in the half court by UCAM on the other end. They knew they had the size mismatch, and then it's just how quickly can you swing that ball. See, they're going to attack Moranin right away, and then the extra touch pass in the corner for three. Jaro, Moranin almost had the three. McAuliffe will defer back over to Moranin. Inside the paint, and the floater popped up in the air. McAuliffe is incomplete, rebounded by Dosu, 
and a minute left in this game we're approaching. They still don't have to foul here. They can ride out one more defensive possession here. They're trying to go for broke with the steal. Seville, and there's a good discipline there. They're, they're giving them the lane, tempting them, but good job by the senior there. Here comes the double. Seville around two. Back up to Dosu. Looking the bulldozer. We get the two points, 14 points for him. And now 84 78 lead, 45 seconds left. Well, it's on Miranda now to pull up from the three point line as they can't afford too many two point shots at this point. Last chance to now for the Westman. Mikhailov denied by Dosu. Whistle. <laughs> and they'll say it's going to count. They're going to say that it was going on the downwards trajectory. So they'll count the two. They'll go to the full court press to try and break them here. Six point lead, 35.3 left. And Mario Joseph will call a timeout. Yes, he will. And I would imagine he will advance the ball with 35.3 left. So right now, Winnipeg in another close encounter in this matchup. Uh, and this is the number I'll give you right now. Uh, the Westman went 16, or a big part. They had two losses when they would score 81 points or more. And they might get their third loss if they do score more than 81 points in the next few minutes, a few seconds of play. I mean, they're elite defensively. They only allow 73 points per game in the regular season. They hold opponents to 30% from the land beyond. But I mean, you look at this game, see that they've countered perfectly. 38%, 11 to 29 from that that mark there. They've already got 86 points. And for Mario Joseph and company, I mean, it's a bit of a party here as you see the fans celebrating right now. The man who's previously played for the Brandon Bobcats, part of their all-decade 2000s team. He's coached this team up. He's the 23 rest coach of the year. And after a disappointing loss yesterday, they've really turned it around here. And they've put their stamp on this game, led by Kevin Civil, who had a disappointing second half. Then a first half in this contest, to be quite frank, or a quarter and a half to start this game. And he's now got four three-pointers, 21 points to lead the home side. And then... Quincy Louis Jean with 18 points and five rebounds, and also checking in as well with 14 and 13, respectively. And with 35.3 left, a six point lead now for the Citadel. They're on possession. And, and it started with the scoring distribution. Sorry to cut you off there, partner, but it started with the scoring distribution right off the start. Everyone equal, and then their elite players took over, and the hand check by Moran. And Moran will be called for the foul, and now that will be team foul number. Well, bonus time now, I beg your pardon, here for the. Citadin and Seville will go to the line here and three team fouls for UCAM. So with 33.9 left, uh, not much room for error now for the Westmen as they are down by six. And this will be a three score lead of seven. And UCAM looking like they are in the ascendancy to be in tomorrow afternoon's fifth place game against the winner of Brock and Uvic, who are now waiting by the in the horizon of the gym. And back out to Alexander, seven point lead. Gyro denied by Seville. The veteran wants to play one more game, and he's fouled by Luke. And he will go to the line for two more free throws, and that might do it here. Nothing just about that authoritative block at the end there on the young freshman. They had the, the senior at the line, the last possession there, and then the hustle back, knowing they're going to try and go for the quick hitter there. And that'll be it for Sha Sean Moran as Mike Rambo gives him a hug there. And... I'm sure this young man's going to want to return for one more crack at the helm there. A, a disappointing end to their season. Yeah, their season will come to an end here. And uh, Moran in tough, tough game here. He took some shots physically the last two days. And Winnipeg will be 0-2 at this Nationals. And their season will come to an end abruptly in terms of what they thought they could have been. Can West runner-ups, and they will be... A top eight team for the year, but unfortunately not where they want to be, which is to be a top team of Canada. Uh, it doesn't dismiss his effort on back-to-back -back days here. Led the team yesterday with 19, 27 in this contest, five three-pointers, seven assists. I mean, he had a great game. Mikhailov, 20 and 15. And you, your two top guys put in the work. It's just, even with the contributions of Malachi Alexander, UKM just too much today. They are going to call off the Westmen, and now that is it. UCAM wins. They are going to play tomorrow for the fifth place game, 88-80. And now for the RSQ, they will have two teams in the top six, depending on what Laval does tonight if they play for gold or bronze tom uh, tomorrow afternoon. But in the seat today, they will be here tomorrow at 12 o'clock for Winnipeg. Unfortunately for them, their season comes to an end on this Saturday afternoon in St. Paul, Quebec. And it's a second chance points. They had 14 in this game in the bench points. They outscored them 33 to 12 in that category. And their senior, 
the league MVP and Kevin Civil puts on a clinic here in what could have been and now will be his penultimate game in his career. Eight of 15, four three-pointers, four rebounds, and a game-high 23 for his team. And stay tuned now for the player of the game. That will come up as you see the handshake line from UCAM Winnipeg. And you see the white shot here as now both teams will go towards their respective free throw line territory and get the player of the game awards presented. And for Winnipeg and for Mike Rambo and stuff, this wasn't what he thought would be the situation here. They were missing Don Stewart in this matchup, which could have been a difference. They lose, they lose by eight. And now let's get ready for Mr. Gary P, the P announcer with the player of the game coming up for both teams. Mesdames et messieurs, voici maintenant la présentation des joueurs du match Nike. Ladies and gentlemen, for the Nike player of the game, please welcome the Director National of Grandes Entreprises chez Green Shield, Monsieur Benoit Lavigne, et Directrice Principale Développement des Affaires Québec chez Green Shield, Madame Catherine Jean. Le joueur du match du côté de Winnipeg, the player of the, the game for the Westman, le numéro 5, number 5, Sean Moranen. Moranen, maybe his last game, we don't know. We'll see if he does come back or not. Uh, but uh, it felt like for him, he's been through the rigors. You see he's got the cupping uh, on his back of, of, of his body here. He's gone through the rigors. And... Uh, a wonderful player, and he might be on the uh, yeah, All-Star team the by the time he, uh, Kama, the decided player of the game for the best, best. Yeah, one of the smallest Number guys 13, on the court, but Kevin one of the biggest Seville. players in terms of playmaking ability. Kevin Seville, the, the player of the game, he will get one more tomorrow afternoon. And just a, a bounce-back performance from the senior who puts on a show here in his home province. He's got to feel good after that performance here. Kevin Seville. Uh, well-decorated player in Quebec basketball. So that will do it for us here for game number one. We'll be back for game number two and see from the highlights on how this played out. It was a blue sky of highlights for the C. The Dang here, Greg. I mean, they, they wear blue. They weren't feeling blue about themselves after yesterday's loss. They came out, they're authoritative. They worked the zone perfectly to the tune of 11 three-pointers, finished 38% from the land beyond, and then those second chance opportunities time and time again. Only 10 offensive rebounds, but they were timely, and Sean Moranen did his part. He did what he could to keep his team in the game with a game high, 27 for either side, and seven assists, but it's just a little too much to see to the end here, as we'll see that just that collapse, and then the poster dunk over Mikhailov, and it was an authoritative performance by UCAM in this game and they will advance deservingly to that fifth place consolation final. We'll have that tomorrow at 12 noon and uh, coming up next we'll have the second game of the consolation bracket. It will be UVic against Brock. We'll have that coming up in about a half an hour's time for now on CBC Sports. You're watching the 2024 men's final eight from St. Foix, Quebec presented by Green Shield and Michelob Light on CBC Sports. We'll speak to you soon. Bye for now. It's that moment again. The one you dream of every night. La seule chose qui te préoccupe, c'est la gloire. Le cheminement de la réussite. Of pushing yourself further than ever before. But the true glory is in the shadows. Les sacrifices que tu fais. Quand toutes les chances sont contre toi. When you can't push one more second. Chase the glory. Viseo.